Hello. In this video, we're going to look at theory for systems of differential equations. Okay, so let's start off with the general form of a system of a differential equation. So that would be x1 prime equals p11 of t times x1 plus p12 of t times x2 plus dot 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 p1n of t times xn and then x2 prime equals p21 of t x1 plus p 2, 2 of t, x2, dot, 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 p2n of t, xn, and then uh, through x prime, xn prime, which is pn1 of t, x1, plus pn2 of t, x2, plus dot, 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 plus pnn of t x n. OK, so this is very similar to a system of regular equations where you've got um, a bunch of variables that you're solving for, say, x1 through xn. And you've got some numbers over here that are on the other side of the equal sign, say, you know, maybe a b1 through a bn. However, um, in that case, you're going through and you're finding the numbers that you'd plug in for the variables x1 through xn that satisfy the equations. This is a system of differential equations. And in a system of differential equations, the x1 through xn are unknown functions. Okay, they're unknown functions that you'd plug into the system that would make all of the equations true, right? So in that case, you take the derivative of the first function and that would equal uh, some function times the first function plus some function times the second function plus that, 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 plus some function times the nth function. And then the derivative of the second function would equal some function times the first function and so on. Okay, so our solution, we're trying to find the function that we would plug in for x1 through xn that would satisfy all of these differential equations. So we can go through and we can rewrite this. into a matrix equation by doing the following. All right, so if we go through and say, uh, if we let x equal x1, x2, dot, 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 through xn, and we let capital P of T equal P11 of T, P12 of T, dot, 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 P1N of T, P21 of T, 2, 2, dot, dot, dot. Oops, the PN, 2N of T. I get a little confused there. Uh, and then PN1 of T, PN2 of T, dot, 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 PNN of T. This is a matrix that's made up of these coefficient functions. And then finally, we can go through and say, let G of T equal G1 of T, G2 of T. Dot, 
dot gn of t. So if we go through and this is a vector. Uh, if we go through and and basically make these uh, substitutions for the stuff up here, then we could rewrite this into rewrite this into x prime equals p of t times x plus g of t. OK, uh, where uh, this is a, the vector x prime. That's, that's the vector x. So we're taking the derivative of that. And that will, will equal uh, p of t times vector x plus vector g. If you were to go through and substitute these in place of of, uh, of the, the um, of each of the of each of those uh, in the equation, and then multiply everything out, it would get you back to here. All right. So um, this and this are the same. This is just a shorthand version of it. And so we go from a system of equations written this way to a matrix equation. Now, one neat thing about this matrix equation is that if you were to write out what a first order differential equation looks like, right, from uh, earlier in the course, it looks like this. Uh, okay, and look at that. If you kind of compare these, isn't it interesting how a system of differential equations turns into a matrix equation that has the exact same format as a first order differential equation. So that's kind of cool. All right. So next we're going to go through and say if g of t, the vector g of t equals the zero vector. Then we can go through and rewrite the equation. We end up with a homogeneous And so in that case, you just would drop off the G. Right. So it has the exact same format as this, but we've just replaced G of T with zero. And if you do that, you end up with the homogeneous system. All right. So I, a comment here. So we're not going to end up getting to solving systems uh, of differential equations that are non-homogeneous. However, this is just an observation you know, for future reference. Um, like with second order differential equations, if you're solving a non-homogeneous system of differential equations, you need to first solve the homogeneous system. And so uh, let's just note that um, just for future reference. OK, and then the next thing, the final thing that we're going to do before we get into our theorems is uh, we're going to discuss the fact that when it comes to solving a system, 
you could have multiple things that satisfy the system of differential equations. So just like you could have multiple things that satisfy a second order differential equation, you could have multiple, I mean, by things, I mean functions, you could have multiple functions that satisfy uh, a second order differential equation in the same way you could have multiple functions that satisfy a system of differential equations. And so because of that, we're gonna introduce some notation for representing multiple solutions. Okay, and so we're going to say the first solution, which we're going to represent with a superscript equal x11 t x21 of t dot 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 through x n1 of t. So we have the first location through the nth location going from top to bottom. That's the first subscript. And then the second subscript corresponds to the numbered solution. And so if we were to go through and have, say, a second solution, second solution to the system would be x12, x22, dot, 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 through x and 2. Say these are all functions of t. dot, dot, dot. And so then if we had an nth solution, we'd have x1n, x2n, dot, 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 xnn. These are all functions of t. OK. And so this enables us to give us a format so that we can go through and represent uh, multiple uh, potential solutions to a system of differential equations. First solution has ones for the uh, second subscript, second solution has twos for the second subscript, and so on, you get the idea. All right, let's jump into our theorems. All right, so let's say we've got two solutions to a system. So let's say if x1 and x2 satisfy the system x equals px. then C1x1 plus C2x2 also satisfies the differential equation. for any C1 and C2. All right, so what does that say? All right, so, let's, so it says that if we've got um, a, if we got two things that would work in the differential equation, so we took this and plug it in, it's true. We take this and we plug it in, it's true. Then it's saying that all linear combinations of those two things would also satisfy the differential equation. So what is that included? It includes all multiples of the first solution, all multiples of the second solution, and then of course the sum of those you know, combinations. All right, so let's go through and prove this. So the way that we can prove it, so we know that if we took this and plug it in, so the, the, the first part of the statement here is if these two things satisfy the system, that means if you took this and plug it in, it works. Take this, plug it in, it works. So we can go through and start off by assuming those are true, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and 
Uh, let's do suppose. So we're going to suppose x1 prime, oops, there's, there should be a prime there, uh, equals px1 and x2 prime equals px2. So we've assumed that both of these satisfy the system, which means that we could take them and plug them in and they make the system true. All right, and then what we need to do then is we need to go through and show that if we took this and plugged it in, it would also make the system true. Um, and the way to do that is to just take this and plug it in. Um, and where we're going to plug it in is we're going to start on the left side. We're going to plug it on the left side, and then as long as we as long as we can go through and via manipulation work our way to the right side, that will show that the two that the, that this does in fact actually make the system work. All right, and so the way that you can do that is you start off with C1 X1 plus C2 X2. Now I'm taking this and I'm gonna plug it in on the left-hand side. So I'm saying I have this prime. Okay, so uh, the prime here is just a derivative. And what do we know about derivatives from calculus? We know that they, they distribute over addition. Um, and if you have a scalar multiple, the derivative of a scalar multiple, then that's equal to the scalar times the multiple of the derivative. Um, in other words, you can go through and, and do this. All right, so we can take that prime and go through and distribute it over the addition, and then we can apply it just to the functions and kind of you know, move, up, move the scalars out of the way. All right, um, so once we've done that, we then look over here. Oh, we've got these two things that told us that we could do this substitution. So we can take this one. This is C1 PX1. This is C2 PX2. All right, and then next, all right, so from here to here, we used some um, theorems related to derivatives. All right, and then so next we're going to go through and we're going to use some matrix theorems. So there's a matrix theorem that says that if you've got a, uh, a scalar times the product of two matrices, then you can go through and move that scalar inside um, and multiply it by the second matrix first. So right now you have this, right? So you've got multiply the matrices first, then by the scalar. Um, and we know according to a the uh, matrix theorem, we can go through and rewrite it like this. Okay, so that's kind of like a commutative theorem there um, in that you can change the order of the scalar and move it inside and multiply it. Um, by the first uh, vector first, and then and so you're kind of changing the order here of the multiplication. Okay, uh, and then so that that's a, a, a theorem from it's a matrix theorem. And then next we can go through and we can actually as long as we can factor out the p here. Notice so you got a p times something and a p times something. So we could factor that out and make this p times c one x one plus c two x two. And as long as you notice you have we have uh, p is being multiplied on the left by you know, by C1X1 and P is being multiplied on the left by C2X2, as long as P is multiplied on the, by the left on the, on the, um, the result here by this expression, um, then that's, that's the requirement of the theorem. So that's another matrix theorem that enables us to go through and factor out. This is kind of a distributive, the reverse of a distributive, like a factoring um, matrix theorem, as opposed to this, you know, changing the order of the multiplication here for this earlier matrix theorem. Um, and so these are all theorems that you could go and look up if you're curious, right? Um, and so by doing that, notice what do we have here at the bottom? We have p times the times the linear combination. So that's the right hand side. So we started with the left hand side, and then through manipulation, we worked our way to the right hand side. 
with this plugged in, uh, and that makes the that makes it so that this satisfies the equation. And so that's the, that completes the proof. All right, so that shows that if you plugged C one X one plus C two X two into this into the system here, then you'll end up getting a true statement. Uh, right, so that, what does that tell us? If x1 and x2 are satisfy the differential equation, then all the linear combinations also satisfy the differential equation as well. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the next theorem. So for this theorem, we have if x1, x2, dot, 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 through xn are linearly independent. For each point, in the interval then each solution by t of the system can be expressed as a linear combination of x1 x2 dot 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 xn. In other words, phi of t equals c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus dot 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 plus cn xn or some c1 c2 dot 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 uh, through cn okay so uh, what does this theorem say it says that if we have n solutions okay and um, also this is maybe not clear in the theorem, but that we have n solutions, the, the assumption here is that we also have n variables. So if you're going through this, this theorem applies to, to this equation. So we've got n things that we're trying to solve and we go through and we have n, we have n linearly independent um, potential solution, uh, solutions, then the linear combination of those n solutions will get us all of the n variables, all the n variable functions. Okay. And so that's what this says. We've got, if, as long as you've got n linearly independent solutions, then you can go through and represent all possible solutions of the system using combinations of those n, right? So that's, those n are sufficient to get us all of the solutions to the system of differential equations. Okay, so um, let's go through and, and, and prove that. Oh, actually, sorry. First, uh, a couple, couple comments. Um, so assuming you've got this, so assuming you've gone through and you've got phi of t equals this, if, C1, C2, dot, 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 through Cn are arbitrary.
then this format is called the general solution. And by this format, I mean this right here. This is the general solution. So that's how you go through and represent the general uh, solution for a system of differential equations. All right, so if you go through and you find n linearly independent solutions, then not only does all combinations of those get us all the solutions, but the way in which we write the general form for the solutions is by writing something like this. C1 times the first one plus C2 times the second one plus dot 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 plus Cn times the nth one. Okay, in addition, uh, assuming again that these are n linearly independent solutions and those solutions get us all the solutions of the differential equation, then we say that those n solutions are a fundamental set of solutions. Notice we say a fundamental set. There could other be more than one fundamental set of solutions. OK, so now let's go through and prove this. So how do you prove it? So first, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a t-naught be in the interval. OK. And then we're going to take that T naught and we're going to plug it into our solution psi. So psi of T naught. And we're going to say that that, oops, whoops, the parenthesis should be. We're going to take T naught, plug it in to our, uh, our arbitrary differential equation. And that's going to produce a solution. And that solution is a bunch of numbers. OK, that's not a bunch of variables. Uh, and so that's going to produce a solution. And then what we want to do is we want to be able to go through and determine if we if we pick a generic T naught and we plug it into our uh, system of differential equations and that produces a solution, then are we guaranteed to be able to find that solution, you know, by going through and using our our um, linearly our linear combination of solutions. Okay, so let's just kind of recap what this is, right? So the idea is we're saying we've got we've got a number that's in this interval. If you've got a number that's in this interval, then that means that you should be able to take that number and you should be able to plug it into your differential equation, and you should be able to produce a set of outcomes. And then if these vectors, if a linear combination of these vectors get us all solutions, then there should be a linear combination that would get that solution, that specific solution. So there should be a way to combine these to get that solution. So does that make sense? So you start off with a generic T naught, plug it in here into our, our you know, a, a, an arbitrary solution to the differential equation, and you get some set of so you get some solution, then you, sh you should be able to go through and combine these. If, if these solutions get, get you all solutions, then you should be able to find a combination that gets you that specific solution. All right, so that's the idea here. So again, with a generic T naught, plug it into the differential equation, we get something. All right, so the question becomes, Can this something be represented as a linear combination of x1, x2, dot, 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 through xn? Are we guaranteed to be able to find a linear combination of x1 through xn that gets us that, that generic solution that we just derived you know, by taking something in 
this interval and plugging it into our, our uh, system of differential equations. Okay. Um, all right. So this is what we want to, this is what we want to answer is, is this, can, can this thing be represented? If the answer is yes, guaranteed it can, then that tells us that the linear combinations of X1 through Xn gets us all the solutions. If we've got a, a generic solution, then we can get all of them. Um, and if not, then not, right? So we want to say yes. We want to go through and say yes. All right. So uh, what's another way to rephrase this? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this question and we want to rephrase it. All right. So in particular, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to turn it into an equation, right? So what we want to know is um, we're going to rewrite it as does the equation c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus dot 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 plus cn xn equal for some C1 through Cn. All right, so this question, can this thing be represented? I can't remember the Greek letter for the, the Greek name for this. I think it's chi, psi. Um, it's one of those two. Uh, can it be represented as a linear combination of these? That's the same question as saying, does this equation have a solution for some C1 through Cn? Okay. And now we're going to go through and rephrase again. So this is another way of saying, if we were to write all of this out, well, what is X1? Well, X1, if we go back to the way that we, we, we came up with these definitions, so X1 is this, x2 is this, xn is this. So if we have multiple solutions, we said this is the format we're going to use. If we just substitute those definitions in, what we end up with is we end up with c1, x11 of t0 plus c2, x12 of t0 plus dot, dot, dot plus Cn X1n of T0. And then we've got C1 X21, C2 X22, Cn X2n. dot, 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 C N X N N of T naught. Okay, so this the question here: Does the equation here equal equal psi for some c one through c n? That's the same thing as saying that uh, does you know it, are the, is the system of differential equations true um, where the system is written out here for some c one through c n? So. Um, does the equation, the system of equations, is the system of equations given here, is that, is it true for some C1 through Cn? So does the system of equations listed here, is that true All right, this is kind of turned into a bit of a mess, but you understand what I'm saying here. So does the system of equations written here, does that system of equations uh, end up being true for some C1 through CN? Okay. Um, and so uh, 
Next, we're going to go through and we're going to rephrase again. All right, so rephrase again. All right. And so we're going to take this and we're going to rewrite it. Instead of in this form, we're going to write it in the form. Uh, we're going to say we're going to go through and replace. We're going to go through and turn the system of, of uh, differential equations here. We're going to turn that into a matrix equation similar to what we did all the way back here at the very beginning. OK, so if you look at this, we went through and, and, and took this side here and we said that that was X and we took and we took this piece here and we made a matrix out of it and um, and then we went through and rewrote it. So we're doing the exact same thing um, here. It's just the, it's the thing we're substituting for a little bit different. So this thing is, is the thing that's on the other side, the equal sign. So that's right there. And then the product that represents this, this side, instead of being P of T times X, it's going to be X, because X are the, is the, are the things that have all the, the subscripts, right? If you go, sorry, we'll just go back one more time here just to make sure this is clear. So you see how P are the things that have all the subscripts? And so that's the thing that's represented as a matrix. And then that's being multiplied by X1 through Xn. And so that's, you've got P of T times X. Okay, well, this time it's a little bit different. And that little bit difference is that we've got the thing that has a subscript are all the X's. So the X's actually are the things, you know, that, that ha that's the matrix, okay? And then the vector that you're multiplying is gonna be the vector C1, right, through Cn. Okay. All right, so, um, so the question does, it, you know, is do we, are we guaranteed to have a solution you know, so does this equal this for some C? Okay, so we went from can this can this uh, can psi be represented as a linear combination of x to one through x n? That's equivalent of saying does the equation here uh, equal psi for some uh, C one through C n? That's equivalent of saying, does the system of, of equations here have a solution for some C1 through, through Cn? And that's equivalent of saying, uh, does x times c equal psi for some c? OK. So this question, whether you're, you know, whether you're guaranteed to go through and have a solution to a matrix equation like this, uh, that's a this is a situation that's covered in linear algebra, and we are guaranteed to have a solution. We're guaranteed to be able to find a C as long as X is invertible. So this statement here, this is going to be true. So guaranteed to be true. That's what we've been trying to figure out. We're trying to find a guarantee. So what is guarantees that to be true? Guaranteed to be true as long as x is invertible. OK, and that comes out of linear algebra. Let's say linear algebra uh, theorem, one of the equivalency statements. All right, and so we go from ask, trying to answer the question is, does this have a solution for some c is, to going through and asking, is x invertible? All right, so did you catch that, right? So we went from going through and asking, uh, can this be done? Uh, does this have a solution? Does this have a solution? Does this have a solution? We get to right here, and the answer to does this have a solution is yes, as long as X is invertible. And so now we've transitioned to is X invertible? So we're not that, if the answer to this is yes, and the answer to this is yes, the answer to this is yes, the answer to this is yes, and the answer to this is yes. So we've kind of shifted over to this different question, is X invertible? Okay, so how can we answer that? So now we're gonna kind of go off to the side here and say, all right, well, suppose X equals X1, X2, dot, 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 through xn, where x1 
x to dot 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 through xn are linearly independent. So what this is saying is if you took a set of linearly independent vectors and you created a matrix out of that set of linearly independent. So keep in mind, this is a vector. So you've got a vector in the first column, a vector in the second column through a vector in the nth column. So this is not a single thing, it's a vector of things. All right, so if you've got, so this is a matrix because you've got N different things and each of those has uh, from top to bottom has N, right? So if you go back, what is X1? X1 is this, there's N things there. What's X2? There's N things there. Xn, there's n things there, right? So this is a matrix where you've got each of the columns is a linearly independent vector, all right? So if you make up x and it's a set of linearly independent columns, um, then according to, then again, this is another theorem from linear algebra, uh, then x is invertible. Okay, and so the where so what does that say? It says that this requirement here, x1 through xn being linearly independent, that is the condition that gets us invertibility. What does invertibility get us? It gets us that this is guaranteed to have a solution for some c, which gets us that this is guaranteed to have a solution for some uh, c1 through cn, which means that this is guaranteed to have a solution for c, some c1 through cn, which means that uh, psi can be represented as a linear combination of x1 through xn guaranteed. Okay, and so that that's the proof. That's what the question was, is if we've got linearly independent vectors, can we represent any solution as a linear combination of x1 through xn? Well, the answer is yes, we can um, uh, because of the, what we just did, because of this whole proof. Okay, um, and then the only question there that maybe is a little that I didn't go into quite enough depth, depth there is that these x's do need to be the same. So this x needs to be this x. But if you go through and take a look here, we said, what, where, where, did this, where did this x come from? Where did this x right here come from? It came from this, uh, this system of, of equations. And that system was made up where you had x11, x21 through xn1, x12 through xn2, right? It had these as the, you know, these values here um, those would make up our X and take a look at them, take a look. What is that? So this is the first one, that's X1. The second set is that's X2. The nth one, that's XN. So it does match up that we have 1, 1, 2, 1 through N1. 1, 1, 2, 1 through N1. So it does match up that if you were to write out the matrix that has these coefficients, it would be the matrix where you have x1 is the first column, x2 is the second column, and so on. Okay, uh, so, so anyway, that's our requirement is that you need to have linear independent vectors, linear, linearly independent solution vectors to go through and say that we've got all of the solutions, all the possible combinations get us, gets us all of the solutions. Okay, now if you'll recall earlier in the course when we went over uh, second order differential equations, we had this idea of the Ronskin. Uh, the Ronskin gave us a, um, a tool for measuring whether our solutions were different enough that we got all of the solutions. So this theorem right here says that if we've got linear independence, then we have all of the solutions. So essentially what we need to do is we need to create a, a Ronskin that measures whether we have linearly independent solution vectors. All right, so what we need is the Ronskin for systems whether x1 through xn are linearly independent. 
If so, then we've got all the solutions. That's what that last state theorem just said. Okay. And what did we say as part of that? As part of the theorem, though, we got to the point where we said, if we went through and took X1 through Xn and made a matrix of them, and that matrix was invertible, uh, then that would be equivalent to those being uh, linearly independent. So um, if X equals X1, X2 through Xn, then X being invertible would be equivalent to the, right? So the Ron scheme for a system needs to determine whether these are linearly independent. Uh, if X, then X um, would be equivalent. To measure to to measuring whether x one through x n okay that ended up being wordier than I meant it to be anyway this the point of this is just saying that rather than go through and figure out whether x one through x n are linearly independent we can instead go through and create a matrix of x one through x n and try and figure out whether those whether that matrix is invertible instead. OK, um, if we did that, then we can go through and use yet another result from linear algebra. OK, and that is uh, X is invertible, right? A matrix X is invertible uh, if and only if its determinant is not equal to zero. So, it, you know, we could go through and rewrite this and say instead of going through and trying to figure out whether X is invertible, instead we can go through and try and figure out whether the determinant of X is not equal to zero. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it this way. Um, so uh, the determinant of x is not equal to zero. Let's let's actually use our math uh, if and only if x is invertible. Uh, and that same thing is true for this one. This should be um, uh, x is invertible if and only if x one through x n are linearly independent. Okay, so these are these are a set of equivalency statements in linear algebra. If you've gone through and you and you haven't taken linear algebra, then you'll cover them when you do. And if you have, then you should recognize that there's a bunch of all these different things that are equivalent. Uh, one of them has to do with x being invertible. That's the same. That's equivalent to the determinant of x not being zero. Um, and both of those are equivalent to x one through x n being linearly independent, uh, as long as you go through and form a, a matrix x from them. OK, um, and so what this gives us is this to go through. We start off with uh, our is X1 through Xn linearly independent. Uh, instead of going through and trying to figure that out, we, we go through and we translate it over and say, is X invertible? And then we can then translate that over and saying, instead of trying to figure out if X is invertible, we can go through and try to determine whether the determinant of X is not equal to zero, right? And that ends up being where we stop. So that's gonna be our Ronskian, right? So the Ronskian for systems of differential equations, the Ronskian for X1, X2 through Xn equals the determinant of X where X is made up of our vectors, our linearly, our, our vectors. Okay, and assuming that is not equal to zero, if that is not equal to zero, if the Ronskin of X1 through Xn, which equals the determinant of X, where X is this, if that's not equal to zero, then that tells us then X1 through Xn
Those form a fundamental set of solutions and the linear combination of those gives us all the solutions. Okay, so hopefully you could kind of follow that. It got a little bit verbose in here, but uh, that's the idea is that we can go through and do the equivalent of what we did in second order differential equations where we had this tool for measuring whether solutions were different enough that we could go through and represent the solutions so that we could go through and represent all the possible solutions, you know, using the ones that we've got. And that tool was called the Ronskin. Uh, we can take that idea, extend it to systems of differential equations, and um, and then anyway, that's all this stuff here, right? So the question is, linear independence tells us that whether they're different enough. Linear independence is equivalent to invertibility if you make a matrix of those vectors. And then invertibility is equivalent to the determinant of the matrix that's made up of those being not equal to zero. And so that ends up being our Ronskin. Oh, I should actually didn't finish writing this. Or a fundamental set of solutions. And C one X one plus C two X two plus dot 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 plus C N X N. Gets us all solutions. Okay, uh, and then finally, there's one more theorem that we're gonna cover here. So suppose we have a system of differential equations where P of T contains real functions if x equals If x equals u of t plus i v of t is a complex solution. So now we're saying, suppose we have a complex solution. Then u of t and v of t are also solutions. Okay, so, so if we say if this is a solution, that means if we could take this, plug it in, makes the differential equation true, then if that's the case, then each of these needs to also be a solution. Okay, so proof. So we know that this is a solution. What does that mean? It means if you take it and plug it in, it needs to satisfy the differential equation. Okay, so if this is a solution, that means you could plug it in and it works. All right, uh, and so now from here we can go through and we can use our, uh, this is just a derivative, and so we can use the same result that we used earlier in the video to say that the derivative distributes over addition, um, and you could kind of ignore the constant here, and so you're going to get u prime. Actually, let's do it like this. No, that's fine. That's, that's how I did it. Uh, u prime of t plus i v prime of t. All right, uh, and then here we could go through and we could multiply through by p, so we're going to get p times u of t plus 
I times P V of T. Okay, and I know that I, I took this and I just kind of moved the I aside. So there's technically I used a couple of matrix theorems to go through and say that I could do that, just treating the I like it's a constant. Okay, um, but you can use those matrix theorems and get to this point. And once you're here, all right, so the, the thing that we know is we've got a complex number on the left and a complex number on the right. Uh, how do I know that? Because this doesn't have an I, this does, that makes this a complex number. Anytime you got something plus I times something else, that's a complex number. Here you got something plus I times something else, that's also a complex number. Whenever you have two complex numbers equal, uh, it's implied, or the, the, sorry, not implied, but the only solution is going to be when the non, um, when the real parts are equal and when the imaginary parts are equal. So from here, you can go through and you can say, uh, U prime of T needs to equal P U of T. Um, and I V prime of T needs to equal I P V of T. Actually, what am I doing? You can just ditch the I's here. The, the, the real parts need to be equal and the imaginary parts need to be equal. Real parts and then imaginary parts, you can just ditch the I's. Uh, and so what does this say? This says that U prime is a solution. And what does this say? This says that V prime is a solution. And so that, that takes care of the, that. That's, that um, that's what we're trying to prove. And so that completes the proof. Okay, and so that's the last theorem, theorem of the section. So that covers our theorems or our theory for systems of differential equations. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.